good day to everyone. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat and welcome to the website of Philippine News. These are our stories for the day. Philippine Embassy defends Louisiana workers and condemns reports that victim had caused the oil rig explosion. The death toll in the November 16 explosion and the fire that hit the oil platform in the Gulf of Mexico has climbed to three Filipinos after authority positively identified the body of recovered December 3rd as that of a missing Filipino worker. Meanwhile, survivors Renato Dominguez, 52 years of age, Wilberto Ilagan, 50 years of age, and a third injured Filipino whose family has requested anonymity have been taken off the critical list. The recovery and identification of the remains of Jerome Malagapo came even as the Philippine Embassy rejected insinuation that the Filipino worker themselves were responsible for the incident that left two others dead and three more seriously injured. The recovery of Malagapo came three days after Tahonera, a 49-year-old welder for Bataan, died as a result of complication from the serious burns he sustained in the incident that also claimed the life of Corporal, a 42-year-old rigger from Iligan City. Two other workers remain in critical condition at the Regional Burn Unit of the Baton Rouge General Hospital, while the condition of another, Wilberto Ilagan, a 50-year-old welder from Batangas, continues to improve. Ambassador Cusilla at the Necrological Services conveyed the condolences of President Aquino and Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert Del Rosario, and then joined the employer and co-workers of the two in expressing their indignation over reports appearing in the media that the Philippine workers were responsible for the fire. But according to Ambassador Cusilla, the nine Filipinos who were on that flat on November 16 would not have been there if they did not pass stringent training, safety, and language requirements both here in the United States and back home in the Philippines. These men have also extensive experience in oil and gas industry with such giants as Shell, Chevron, and the British Petroleum. <music> Four hundred seventy-seven dead, hundreds of homeless after typhoon in Mindanao, a quarter million Filipinos were homeless, and four hundred seventy-seven confirmed dead after the Philippines' worst typhoon this year, officials said December six, as the government appealed for international help. Typhoon Bopa, which was locally named Typhoon Pablo in the Philippines, plowed across Mindanao Island last December fourth flattening whole towns in its path as hurricane force winds brought torrential rain that triggered floods and landslides. Erinea Cantilla and her family walked barefooted for two days in a vain search for food and shelter through a muddy wasteland near mountainous towns of New Bataan after the deluge destroyed their house, their banana and their cocoa farms. Rescuers said they were looking for some 380 missing while seeking help for more than 250,000 others who were sheltered in schools, gyms, and other buildings after losing everything. Shell-shocked survivors scrabbled through the rubble of their homes to find anything that could be recovered as relative search for missing family members among mud cake buddies laid out in rows on tarpaulins. President Benigno Aquino has sent food and other supplies by ship to 150 people on Mindanao's east coast where three towns remain cut off by landslides and wrecked bridges. Officials said that many of the 477 dead victims were poor migrants who found work at landslide-prone sites such as the New Bataan and nearby Moncayo towns, either at unregulated gold mines or at banana plantations. President Aquino calls for an end to the debate on reproductive health. President Aquino called on legislators to finally vote 
on a controversial birth control bill last December 4th. After months of debate over what is highly divisive issue in the conservative country, the bill would pave the way for the introduction of sex education in schools and the provision of free contraceptives. But as polarized the largely Catholic nation of about 100 million people, President Aquino met with members of the House of Representatives to call for a final decision because it is one of the most divisive issues that have confronted the entire Filipino people. According to the President, there has to be an end to the debate so it could be put into a vote. Several women's groups as well as the United Nations have been pushing for the law to be passed, saying it would help to bring down poverty as well as the Philippines' high rate of death in childbirth. However, the measure is opposed by the politically influential Catholic Church, which is against the use of contraceptives, including condoms and birth control pills. President Aquino is now calling for a vote on this bill in the lower house this week so that it can go to the Senate before either being signed into law or vetoed by the president. The president himself was for responsible parenthood, but he would leave it to the legislators to vote on the measure based on their conscience. <music>